And let's get back now to that news from Oklahoma today. Representative Mark Wayne Mullen, Republican of Oklahoma, joins us right now. Congressman, I appreciate the time. I know you have a lot going on. Uh, let's start with this decision to commute the death sentence today for Julius Jones. Uh, right. The governor made that decision. You, uh, you agree with that? You know, um, I haven't looked into the case at all, and I support the governor. You know, the, the governor has to make a tough decision there, uh, and so it's hard for me to really comment too much on it, but I know the governor. I know he put a lot of prayer. He put a lot of thought into it, and he, he, he got wise counsel on it, so uh, I support his decision. Let me ask you on a bigger picture question then, Congressman. Uh, at least 22 states, and I think maybe even more under a governor's uh, hold, have abolished the death penalty. I know you just resumed it there in Oklahoma. Do you think it's time to do away with this? No, absolutely not. I think that's the decision that the grant that the juries can make, and um, you know, there's a there's a certain price you have to pay uh, when you commit a crime. And if his peers that are um, that are on the jury box decides to put him to death, I think that um, that they have the right to do that. So I don't I don't believe in abolishing the death penalty at, at all. All right, I want to get you on mandates in a minute, but let's get to pressing business here. Are you going to vote on the uh, the Build Back Better plan tonight? You heard the numbers from the CBO. We just reported it. I guess 367 yeah. billion added to the deficit over uh, 10 years. Again, will you vote on it tonight? And will you be a hard no? I'm a, I'm a, I'm absolutely a hard no, and yes, we'll be voting on it late tonight. You know, this is typical Pelosi style. Uh, we saw this in 2010. Uh, actually, you know, about a month from from now, when she uh, jammed uh, everybody with Obamacare and actually told the uh, the congressional individuals that were here at the time and the American people, if you want to know what's in it, read it uh, or pass it, then you can read it. Well, this is the same thing, except this is bankrupting the country. If you think about the 1.75 trillion dollar bill that they're passing tonight that they literally uh, just released the full text recently on and, and then we just got the CBO score we're going immediately into vote we actually debated the rule and debated the bill before it was even out how do you even do that I don't know uh, only Pelosi's math works that way and and here she put, moves forward and is going to do 1.75 trillion on top of her 1.3 trillion dollars that they pass on the infrastructure this is just a huge move to, to take over our country with socialist uh, agendas, and it, it should scare the daylights out of everybody. I, I, I've literally have been saying this for a long time, that Pelosi's a tyrant, and she is truly a tyrant that's moving this country towards a socialist country. All right, let's catch you. We're running out of time here, Congressman, on the, the governor in your state's decision not to mandate the COVID vaccine for National Guard troops. Where does this come between federal and state control? Is this up to the governor, and should it be? Absolutely. Underneath Title 32, it's clear that the chain of command rests solely with the governor of the state. They don't go underneath DOD. I don't care what Secretary Austin says or not. That Secretary Austin came out and said that DOD, the Pentagon, has authority on the National Guard. That is absolutely not true. They only have the authority when, they, when the National Guard gets activated and they go underneath Title 10. Hmm. Underneath Title 32, the governor absolutely has the right to do that, and he has made the right decision. Getting the vaccine is a personal choice. It's the choice of the individual and if they choose to get it they have their they can get it if they choose not to that is their choice well i know other states have called asking how uh, your governor did it so we'll see where it goes from here one other thing i wanted to get you on congressman um your trip to afghanistan i know it's been a little while but you went over there yes. to try to rescue some folks and bring them out of afghanistan you got stopped with a bag of cash <laughs> money talks i mean looking back well, on this now i know you don't have yeah. any regrets but would you have done anything differently yeah, no, listen, that, that story that they put out is absolutely false. To operate in that country underneath uh, underneath Sharia law to which Governor or uh, President Biden surrendered Afghanistan to, uh, that's their currency. They don't have car they don't have credit cards. You can't operate anyway but with cash. And the only regret is we didn't go in there sooner because we still have Americans left. We still have uh, LPRs, which are legal permanent residents left. We are currently holding uh, roughly 124. We're trying to get help. Uh, Secretary Secretary Blinken's not being help, helpful at all. Director Burns for the CIA is not being helpful at all. And we are still over there working, and a lot of other groups are over there working. We have been successful. We've got a lot of AMSETs and LPRs out, right. uh, but there's a lot more to be done. And I promise you, every American over there would love to be home for the holidays, but they were abandoned literally abandoned by the State Department and President Biden. Well, we're talking to groups as well that are still trying to get the Afghan allies out. Uh, it's great to have you, Congressman Mark Wayne Mullen of Oklahoma. I know, again, you have a busy night ahead. Thanks for the time.
Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.